Hey Michael, I hear that your team, the Three Bridges, have gotten to the finals and playing on Sunday down at Hove. That's one of my favorite grounds, by the way. I took a few weeks down there against Sussex or Derbyshire. But forget about that. Concentrate on this game on Sunday. You have got to take the cup home. I wish you and the team all the best. Ball by ball and over the time, make sure you concentrate and get that cup. Good luck. Wise words there from one of the most well-recognised voices and figures in the sport, Michael Holding. And a great intro into the final game of our summer. And what a belt we've got for you today down at Hove at the Sussex County Ground. It's the T20 final against the Premier League winners, Preston Nomads. Quick recap of how we made it here, and you can catch up on all of these on the channel, obviously. First round win over Div 2 side Burgess Hill back at the start of May. Second round, we hosted Bogner and a 25 ball 70 from Boyle swung the game in our favour. Quarter final, we won by eight wickets over Buxted Park. Boyle and Cowdery helping us to chase 155 in 13 overs. And then finally, back in mid-July, we sealed our place in the final with a convincing win over Cookfield. So as the scoreboard says, first blood Preston Nomads as they win the toss and choose to bat first on this used wicket. The county ground hosted the T20 trophy and plate finals earlier in the day with Hailsham and Goring 2s picking up the honours in those competitions. So this pitch has already had at least 80 overs on it. Holly Blanford comes back into the side for what is probably our most used lineup of the season. <laughs> The crowd and supporters all ready to go and just before the boys head out we partook in a minute's applause for Daniel Oliver who passed away suddenly aged 50 a few weeks ago. Daniel had many roles within Sussex cricket and even headed up the concept of this annual T20 day at Hove. Thoughts are with his family and loved ones. So here we go, light slowly taking effect, and as some of you who tuned in for the live stream already know, first over is to be taken by Connor Golding. Two boundaries from that first over, one of which the result of a big LBW appeal. Eight off the first over for Preston Nomads and second over to be bowled by Aaron Brown.
And with the second ball of the third over, we get our first wicket on the board. The two opening bowlers linking up as Aaron takes a few steps in from deep third to take the catch. With eight runs off Aaron's over, a score 16 for one after 2.2 overs. Tough chance, but I think that one did just about carry to KV out in the deep. Seven runs from that fifth over, and with just one more over of the power play left, he scores 33 for one after five. And an impressive sixth over from Aaron. Preston Nomads are 37 for one from the power play. First opportunity for the slow bowlers today. Rowan and his offspin on from this near end now that the fielding restrictions are lifted. Ibrahim not letting Rowan settle and there were 14 runs from his first over. Joe's still sticking with spin and now we've got Ben Lucking and his left arm orthos from the far end. And with his third ball, he's got the wicket. Lucko entices the batsman down, turns it past the bat, and Joey Walker removes the bails. That wicket probably evening things up now, and it's tricky to tell which team would be happier with their start. Big wicket now takes to the crease for Nomads, with John T. Jenner in at four.
So a wicket and four runs from Lucko's first over. Rowan's out of the attack and replaced by Ollie Blandford for the ninth over. With Nomads on 55 for two from eight overs. Stumping chance there for the skipper, and with that maximum, there were nine runs from the over, taking Nomads up to 70 for two at the halfway stage. Yeah. Mr. Blanford sends down one of his doorknobs, sticks in the pitch a little, and Scotty Lenham takes the catch off the leading edge. First wicket the match for Blanny, and the score now 72 for three from 10.3. Another bat strays out of his crease and Joe makes no mistake this time. He's got another stumping, courtesy of Benny Lucking. And a few wickets in a cluster here will surely help to stifle this Nomad's innings. The score's now 73 for four after 11.1. And thoughts turning to what's gonna be a winning total here for Nomads. Probably something in excess of 150. The pitch a little stoppy into the wicket, but the outfield here absolutely rapid. Middle overs now and George Cave coming on to bowl down the hill at Hove. Lucko's last over there slightly ruining his figures. It goes for 11 and he ends his four overs with two for 26, with the score 99 for four after 14 overs. The ball now is tossed back to Rowan Nord. Three dots precede that wicket and Rowan's got himself on the board. Two stumps out the ground, they must be put in even easier than the ones at Bridges. Rowan closed that over out with just three runs coming from it. Five overs left of the innings with the score 102 for five. Now it's over to the overseas for his first feature today. Bowling the 16th over is the leg spin of Matthew Boyle.
Nomad's going after that 16th over and 15 runs from it has them up at 117 for five. And that's the sixth wicket gone, second for Rowan and Joe's third stumping. Nomads may be conscious they're a few short and trying to accelerate in the back end of the innings. Rowan cops that final ball on the knee and smiles through the pain. Only two runs from the 17th and Preston Nomads 119 for six with three overs remaining. Another tight set, this one from Ollie. We've done really well to keep these runs down with just 25 runs from the last four overs. Nomads 124 for six with 12 balls remaining. A near perfect pick up and throw from Caldry at Longhorn, getting the run out. A really tight start to the over again, and Nomads feeling like they need to push for every single run out there. 127 for seven from 18.4. And with his final delivery, Rowan has another. After his first over went for 14, he's come back and bowled three overs for eight runs and also taken three wickets in the process. He's really changed the course of this innings and potentially the outcome of the match. Yeah. Final over now, Nomads 127 for eight. One more tight over to end things, please, Ollie. What a piece of fielding that is, oh my giddy arm. Some worldy catches have been captured by this lens over the years, and this is right up there with the best of them. Boiler takes the catch just in front of the rope, but with his momentum taking him over the boundary, he releases it and tosses it to Brownie, who comes round to take the simple catch and the credit in the scorebook. Great work by the pro Boiler, who makes it look easy, but also credit to Brownie for running round preempting the relay. Jenna takes Ollie for 14 off the last three balls, missing his length only slightly there, but still going the distance. Jenna ends unbeaten on 53 from 28 balls and gets Nomads up to 143 for nine from their 20 overs. Overall, we've got to be happy with that. The ball did stop a little in the pitch slightly with cutters and slower bowlers most effective. Connor and Aaron pretty tight at the top in the power play. Lucko and Blanford with two wickets each. But pick of the bowlers has got to be Rowan Nord with three for 22 from his four overs.
So now over to the batters. It's just over seven runs and over needed to win and take the glory. Heading out to open up as they have done in all of our 28 matches this season. It's James Russell and Matty Boyle. Rustler takes four from the first delivery and then Boyle ends the over with a boundary two. Great signs from the first over with nine off it to get the chase started. Seven off the second, a tight run there to end the over, but Boyle makes his ground. Score now 16 for none, off two overs. Crowd fully getting behind the Bridges boys out there and some lovely sounds off the bat from those two. Power play done, the score 44 for none off the first six overs.
12 off the seventh, and these two really starting to enjoy themselves tonight. It's 56 for none off seven, with 88 needed from 78 balls. Russ goes back to that and has his stumps rearranged. Nomads finally get the breakthrough they were after. Russell falls for 29 of 28 balls, putting on 70 for the first down with Boiler. Next to the crease is Connor Golding. Boyle tries to send that one into next season, but miscues it and is caught in the ring. A destructive innings as ever from the Kiwi. He goes to 43 from 27. Two quick wickets for Nomads. They'll feel like they're right back in this. In at four, the man without an average for us this year in T20s, it's Michael Cowdery. A very nervy looking dugout. It's the halfway stage of the chase, 82 for two from 10 and 62 needed off the final 60 balls. Mikey takes 18 off the 12th over, including that maximum over the covers from the final delivery. A big over for us. It's 108 for two with 36 needed now from 48 balls. Thank you. 
Couple of tighter overs for Nomads. It's now 29 needed from six overs. up there between Connor and Mike, a shot at Connor's end, but it results in five overthrows. With that drop catch in the previous, it's all looking to be going in our favour at the moment. So 130 for two, this chase now coming to its conclusion. It's just 14 needed from 24 balls. On paper, we're massive favourites, but anything can happen in a final, right? Connor tries to go back to back and he looks to be caught in the deep. Just out of picture in the stand to the right, the majority of spectators are signalling six though. The umpires come together as Connor stands his ground and after a brief discussion, they signal it a six. So 12 off those last two deliveries and scores are now level with more than three overs left to bowl. But Connor can't see it home. He waxes to mid-wicket who takes a great catch stretching up high, just out of shot. I guess to remove any question of bump ball, he throws down the stumps, but Connor knows he's out already. Jamie couldn't get it done, but he takes the applause after his innings of 31 off 27 balls. All that's left now is for Scott Lennon to get out to the middle and hopefully see Mikey get us over the line from the non-strikers. And four runs there seals it and crowns Three Bridges Cricket Club the 2024 Sussex T20 Cup winners. What a win and you can see what it means to Cowdery, who ends 36 not out from 24 balls. What a way to end the season having played so well this year and to finally get our names on some silverware. As a famous bald northerner once said, pressure is for tyres and the boys all showed no signs of the pressure getting to them today. A really good team performance with everyone contributing tonight. As you can imagine, it was a late one down on the south coast. Mentioned to Nomads, what a season you boys have had. The finals played in great spirits and was good to be joined by a few of you boys for beers later. Thanks to all of those who came along and supported. It was really much appreciated with stories of some of you making long journeys on a Sunday night to come and watch us. All that's left now is to lift the trophy and see who gets awarded man of the match. Full of two quick wickets and really steadied the ship by a smidge.
the, uh, the player of the match for 36 not out of 24 balls is Michael Cowdery. <laughs> Just one final graphic on screen, Joey Walker ending the T20 Cup with the most fielding victims, Boyle with the most runs, and Rowan with the joint most wickets. I know getting to the final means that we end up playing the most matches, but still credit where it's due, lads. Thanks all for your support and following this year. I hope everyone wins as well, and we'll be returning next season, I'm sure. If you enjoyed the content these past couple of months, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, and all the rest of it. Thank you for watching. Signing off the 2024 season as Sussex T20 Cup winners. It's three bridges. Bye-bye.